Hi guys, Kotutar here and my name is Anil Deshpande. In the previous video, we have seen how the main activity view implementer is actually implemented. So let's just go through some of the pertinent questions that we had asked when we had started implementing the view. The main question was, how do you separate the layout inflation from the activity? Well, if you pay attention to the constructor of the implementer, the layout inflation is happening here instead of anything happening in the main activity. Our activity is empty as of now. And the second question that we had asked was, how do you instantiate all the view that are there in the activity well we have just moved all the activity widget instantiation to the init view method of the view implementer and the third question was how are we going to handle the event handling well that is also being done in the init view method of the implementer the last but not the least question is how the activity lifecycle methods are going to play into this main activity view implementer. That is pretty easy to explain. If you recall, your activity has got methods like onCreate and onResume. What we will do is we will create an instance of view implementer in the activity and then in the onCreate method, we will invoke init UI on the view instance and in the onResume method, we bind the data using the view instance. I think it is time to have a look at that through a live coding now. So this is the main activity. In the main activity, I will create a main view implementer. Let me call it as MVC view. And inside the onCreate method, we will create an instance of MVC view. So it is new main activity implementer and the argument is context. In this case, I can send the main activity itself as the argument and then the second argument is container. I can just send null. And then the first method is set content view. This is where we would have set the layout file. We would have written r dot layout dot main activity. But we don't need to do that. Our MVC view dot get root view will give us the view that needs to be passed on to the main activity. After that is done, I can write MVC view dot init views. This will invoke the instantiation of all the widgets on the screen and even applying the event listener. And then finally, in the on resume method, what I can do is MVC view dot bind data to view. And when I do that, bind data to view will invoke MVC controller on view loaded and that in turn calls the on view loaded of the controller and you can see that what i am doing inside here is i am invoking the mvc views show all to do's and i am passing the all to do's from the model because the controller has the model and that will once again invoke the mvc view implementers show all to do's i think the best way to understand this would be just run this so let me debug the application so as you would expect, first it will come to the MVC view and after that, inside that we inflate the layout as a part of the constructor and then the get root view will be invoked from the main activity that will return the root view and after that the MVC view dot init views gets invoked that will initialize all the views and the event listener and after that inside the on resume MVC view dot bind data to view gets invoked which in turn invokes on view loaded from the controller and in the on view loaded we invoke mvc model dot get all to do's and that will return me whatever the data i need to send it back to the controller and from the controller i come back to show all to do's and the text view to do's gets initialized with the to do list and that's it at the end of the day you are able to successfully show the data on the screen so if i try to put this behavior through a block diagram it will look like the view will inform the controller the view can do that because it has a reference of a controller controller in turn will ask for the model to do some 
data crunching. Controller can do that because controller has a reference to the model and the model will give it back necessary data. Once the controller gets back the data from the model, the controller will inform the view. The controller can inform the view because controller has a reference of the view. So this is how the overall flow of MVC looks like. Some people try to slightly modify this. What they actually do is after model informs the controller, what they suggest is why not controller just inform the view about success or failure and let the view get the data from the model. In that case, our block diagram slightly changes. The view will have to fetch the data from the model. For that, the model instance have to be there in the view. I personally don't prefer this because you are unnecessarily creating too many instances of the models in the view and controller. There is another alternate approach wherein instead of model informing the controller and then controller informing the view, some people suggest that after the model is done with its work, why not model directly inform the view. In that case, our block diagram would be model informing view. This doesn't necessarily mean that the model needs to have the instance of view inside it. This way of implementing the MVC is called as active model MVC because in this case model is not passive model is actively updating the view there is a way to achieve this in next video i will demonstrate you how to do this that brings us to the end of this particular video don't forget to like comment share the video and subscribe to the channel take care bye